Hi, my name is Yvonne Wan. Welcome to my class. Today we are going to learn how to draw a clownfish. Clownfish are known as bright orange fish with three vertical stripes or bars down their sides. There are many different types of clownfish. We are going to draw a animated version of a clownfish like this. So the art supplies that you will need today are paper, pencil, eraser, marker and colouring pencils. First I'd like you to draw the fish body by drawing a shape like this. Then I'd like you to draw a tail like this and then I'd like you to draw the head by drawing a curve like this. Then I'd like you to add the fins like this. Follow the shapes according to what you see. Next, I'd like you to draw a bar across the head like this, and then add a cheek to the fish's head. Next, I'd like you to draw eyes like this, or any way you like, and a big mouth, or any facial expression that you like on your fish. Next, I'd like you to draw the other bars on the fish, and some texture on the fins. Please refer to the top left-hand corner for a reference picture. Once you have finished your drawing, I would like you to go over your pencil lines with a black marker. Now we are going to colour the fish. So I would like to introduce you to the use of colouring blenders when it comes to colouring your art. If you apply the blender to your colours, you will notice that the whites will start to vanish and the colours will become more smooth and solid. If you apply the blender on several colours, the colours will blend nicely, creating a gradation of colours and create new tones in the process. Blenders can make your art appear more smooth and realistic. And now I'm going to introduce you to the use of burnishers when it comes to colouring your art. A burnisher keeps your whites white. You can apply it as an undercoat or an overcoat. As an undercoat, you can use it to create brick lines, for example, and then colour in the bricks without needing to colour around it. If you want to create a shiny effect, you can choose to use the burnisher as an overcoat. So there are different effects you can achieve by the way you handle your pencil. So if you apply light pressure, the colours will come out lighter. If you apply medium pressure, it will appear a little bit darker. If you apply a lot of pressure, then it will be extremely dark and more solid. If you have trouble applying light pressure to your pencil, you can handle the pencil from the top. You will notice the colours will be a lot lighter as a result of the way you're holding the pencil. The directions of your strokes is important, so I highly recommend that you use one direction when you are shading. If you apply your strokes in different directions, you will notice that the colours will be inconsistent as a texture. Another stroke you might want to consider is um, applying cross-hatching, and that involves colouring in one direction for the first layer, and then the second layer you do the opposite direction. And that way you would be able to cover the full area very thoroughly and have a more solid appearance in uh, pigmentation. Another texture you might want to consider is circular motions. This provides a different texture and can be very useful uh, depending on what texture you prefer. Another technique you might want to try is layering. You can choose two different colours and put them on top of each other creating new colour tones. So I'd like to teach you how to do highlights. First of all, you need to have a light source so you can determine which part of the drawing should have uh, 
a brighter side and which side should have a darker side. And you can have the highlight using white or you can use a burnisher. And um, here I'm just using grey to depict shadow. So now that I've taught you some basics uh, when it comes to colouring techniques, I would like you to apply everything that you've learned to the drawing. So just to summarise, the directions of the strokes matter, the pressure that you apply matters, the amount of layers that you apply also matters, and it's also important that you factor in highlights and shadows using whites and darker colours and the burnisher too and um, always use a blender if you have that available to you because it's always going to make your art pop this concludes today's class i look forward to seeing you next week bye